Although the internet first became available in Kenya in 1993, it was not until in the early 20s that public commercial internet cyber cafes set in. And even then, internet users fell below a million. Tonight, we shed light on the changing landscape of cyber cafes and how this business model has been affected by the smartphone. Here is that story by Pauline Kihali. <laughs> The cyber cafe craze spread like bushfire until the advent of smart mobile phones, attributing to the rising numbers of internet users, which stood at 18 million as at the beginning of 2023. In the not so distant past, cyber cafes were bustling hubs where people used to surf the web, check mails, and engage in online activities. However, with the advent of smartphones and the reach of mobile technology, the role and relevance of cybers, as they are commonly referred to, has undergone a remarkable transformation. With mobile data plans becoming more affordable and Wi-Fi hotspots becoming increasingly available, individuals can now carry the power of internet access in their pockets. Joyce Wamboi is a cyber cafe owner in Nairobi County. She gives an insight of how the business is performing and how it is coping with the changing landscape. Now you see it's easy for us to share files with clients when they want to see it come and print a document. It's easy for them to share via their phone towards my uh, computers and I'll be able to print for them easily. Many customers now prefer to use their smartphones for social media and communication. To Joyce, the road ahead is full of challenges and opportunities and the cyber cafe business does not appear to be going under yet. Things are evolving at a faster rate. Yes, there was a time we thought uh, the cyber cafes are going to die and all not, and whatnot. But as an industry, we've just come up with ways of us to remain relevant to the economy and to the sector. Lynette, a cyber cafe owner, shares her perspective about the resilience of her business. My cyber cafe has not been uh, affected because of the location. I'm surrounded by students. We cannot hire someone to type for now because no one is coming to type. Both Lynette and Joyce serve customers who are mostly students. Printing and scanning services are mostly done in the cyber since not everyone owns a printer or a scanner at home. In the heart of Nakuru County, we meet Ben, an enterprising businessman who runs a cyber cafe for the past five years. Customer kwa nakuja wana browse, but after simu kukuja, zimetu affect a bit like a 40 to 50 percent. He also trains students who wish to learn more about computers. His customers have remained loyal, which makes him a proud cyber cafe owner. Kutoka mwaka 2018, sijai waruz, and they also connect me to other customers. To some, cyber cafe services are still an option, but to others, they used to visit a cyber back in the day, but with smartphones becoming advanced and accessible, they find no need to go to the cyber. I prefer coming to the cyber. One, because uh, you'll be less distracted here by the apps, actually, and you get adequate assistance from the people who work here. I even know the last time I visited a cyber because things have Things are easier when you can do them on your own, on your phone. Most of the things I do them via my phone and through the government agencies when you meet idea, are most of the things you can access through your phone, Kama iTax, eCitizen. So like recently, I file tax zanguna, simu yangu, ajabidi ni ende cafe. As we step into an era defined by technology advancements, the future of cyber cafes is uncertain but full of possibilities. Will they reinvent themselves to remain relevant or will they be nostalgic relics of the past? Only time will tell. Pauline Kihali reporting for KBC Channel One.